So welcome all of you to the second episode of the modern being workflow using Autodesk Data Exchange Connector. In today's work, uh, webinar, we are going to talk about the extended workflows for Autodesk Construction Cloud. And uh, before that, uh, let's move ahead with our introduction. So hi, everyone. I am Vivek Mahajan. I am heading partnerships and business development at CCT Pune. I have done my graduation in uh, electronics. And uh, after that, I have done my post-graduation in advanced computing. I have done a lot of projects in uh, uh, automation into the AEC industry, also using the AIML opportunities. Then with me, my colleague, Subranshu. Yes, so I have graduated in mechanical engineering. And uh, since then, I have been working in as a user of uh, mechanical softwares. Then I graduated into development of those softwares. Then I entered into creation of our own uh, software uh, for our own purpose, CC Tech. CC Tech has its own software now. It's very famous in the market called as Simulation Hub. So Vivek and me have uh, been there with this simulation now from the start of it, uh, from its inception till today. It's almost 10 years it's in the market and uh, it addresses a uh, region uh, CFD specific uh, market, but that's a different story. That's the software side of CC Tech. But our other side of CC Tech kept on growing as we grew in the organization and we then entered AI in uh, space. And now what we offer today or what we had here today in uh, CC Tech is we run the together uh, with one of our colleagues, three people, we run this uh, business unit called as Digital Transformation. And uh, what we do is uh, we cater the uh, end customers of uh, uh, softwares from uh, engineering space like CAD, CAM, CA type of softwares and we extend the capabilities of those softwares and create a unified workflows in the organization. So highly customized enterprise software development in the engineering space. That's what we do. And uh, to talk about uh, the type of industries we are into, definitely AC, infrastructure industry. Along with that, we get into oil and gas sector. We have we have things, uh, solutions and offerings into semiconductor industry and a lot of advanced uh, manufacturing sector also. So that's what we have been doing from last 18 years now. Yeah. Uh, we are a consulting company, mainly, majorly. And what we do is, uh, uh, what we have built today, or uh, what we have today is the uh, solutions, the offerings, the modules that is already ready by serving so many uh, companies in our industry. And uh, now it's very uh, uh, it's like uh, we have this capability to uh, join these components together and build customized workflows for you very quickly. And all of them being uh, running from so many years today, they are all in the best capability and uh, the type of solutions that we could offer is in, in that um, small go-to-market time is something that we are really expert at. So that's that's the uh, small pitch of CC Tech in short through our introduction. Yeah, and uh, we also wanted to share our uh, learnings with you. So that's why we have we thought to have this series of webinars so that uh, we can have provide our understanding about the domains and help the people to understand how the automation and system integrations can help to move ahead in their workflows. Yes, and today the way this uh, whole scenario of uh, engineering tech is changing from uh, licenses or seats as we used to call it. how many seat a company has from that to now there are these online cloud services and platforms for pay per use licensing and then uh, black bring uh, all these cats uh, companies bringing in platforms which can be then used to create our workflows which are which were never imaginable earlier so it's very important to have a uh, the understanding of the market needs and share the type of uh, knowledge that we have around this space, which is beyond uh, having a software license. So how I can stitch together all my softwares and then make some data flow happen, make some uh, workflows happen and then create some 
customized solutions like the way one one of the greatest solution is uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud, right? Similarly, uh, every tool uh, has some boundaries and then how we can uh, take solutions beyond those boundaries, how we can stitch uh, multiple solutions together. So that's why we call ourselves from deep of our heart, like we are the system integrator in this software space. That's it. So let's move ahead with the what are the current challenges in the AEC industry. So a lot of people are using majorly the Revit files and Revit files become bulkier and bulkier when it becomes to populate a lot of data, including the MEP, electrical and all the architectural contents into it. So that's a bulkier files is the major challenge. Then the workflows or the design is happening into the silos, like the MEP design is not aware of the architectural design like that. So this is the major challenge. Then versioning, because of the bulkier size, people are working on the older version of the files instead of merging them together. So versioning is also quite a, quite a good issue in this industry. Then if you talk about the people, there is a little call. Uh, little cooperation because people are working around the globe on the different different geo locations they have their different cultures and different processes so you can imagine there might be some uh, frictions are happening into the collaboration then skills gap are there like uh, the people who know the revit efficiently they don't they might not know the autocad efficiently or they don't know the take life efficiently but when we talk about the EC, it is the mixture of the whole architecture and all those things. And again, the security and IT concern, because in the whole EC industry is working like a contractor, subcontractor and vendor fashion. In this case, uh, to share the data with any particular contractor, subcontractor or vendor, uh, many times the security and IP concerns are there. So they, they cannot share the whole files. So they don't, they wanted to share only the small chunk of the data, or small files of it. So many times they just create the PDFs and try to share share the data, but it is not the efficient way to do the sharing. So, so I will try to explain this slide in a more articulative way. So how AC uh, workflow happens. So it starts from the design. In the design phase, uh, the lot of design softwares get into use like AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Revit, Tecla, Inventor, and then it comes after the design, it goes to the analyze because people want to analyze their designs, how they are working properly or are they uh, not compliance with any particular rules. So that's why then comes the Navix was to do the collaboration between the different different CAD software, then softwares like simulation of to do the analysis of the designs, for particularly in HVAC stand industry. Then comes the Solibri to do the building code compliances. Then Stat Pro type softwares to do the structural, structural analysis. After the analysis and design is done, then uh, comes the plan and the build, where actual construction of the things happen, the planning and the build. So here the ACC co-pilots, then ACP, then Power BI, Power Automate. These are the tools which are majorly helpful in this domain, how they can uh, uh, help to do the planning and the building of the things. And when it comes to the operator, after the facility or building is get completed, then Revit Pro, Tandem, IBM, Maximo, Honeywell. So these are majorly comes under the facility management or a, a digital twin kind of things so that everyday workflows or operations can be monitored and handled in an efficient manner. Yes, this is just a glimpse of the softwares. Actually, if you see, there will be more than thousands of softwares in this space of uh, Pixel Manager like ACC. It's a yeah. very good computer of ACC is what I can say. They are also good, but you know, that's a lot of softwares in this space and every software, uh, when uh, we work with the software in a, a closed loop, loop or closed space, uh, communication between softwares is a problem. There are Autodesk, if it is Autodesk package, then you can have communication happening between multiple softwares. You can import AutoCAD drawings into almost every other software of Autodesk. But uh, think about um, 
taking that data outside of Optus ecosystem and then getting into some other softwares. It's very difficult. Uh, the data has to be manually handled. And then we do not work in just one set of uh, design uh, designs, right? It happens over an iteration of multiple designs. And then it's a two for two and for communication. So the major part of this was solved by Optus Construction Club or the way we used to call it earlier, BIM360. So BIM360 uh, and Autodesk Construction Cloud together uh, came up to the rescue to this situation. And then the previous problem that we just discussed, those were uh, very nicely handled by them. Then Autodesk has also introduced something today is called as data exchange. Through that, the uh, uh, benefit of this data flow flowing from one software to another is more streamlined and now it is extended beyond Autodesk systems. It goes into Stat Pro, it goes into Tech Lite, it goes into a Power BI, Inventor. Yeah, it, it's uh, I think SolidWorks also. Yes. So uh, the whole CAD ecosystem uh, around the globe, that's what it is now being extended into. So it's a beautiful uh, way to uh, redesign the way we work with uh, files and data. And I think Subrahan should the major benefit of power of the data exchange is that it is the it is not dependent on any particular file format of the design yes. software. So it's a centralized uh, data structure type of thing where all the data is maintained. That's why we are highlighting Autodesk Docs in the center because the whole uh, backbone of this ecosystem is Autodesk Docs. So, and it all happens through just one license, right, for our Autodesk Docs. So, if you have a Docs license, whether it is through BIM 360 documents or ACC Docs, that's pretty much enough to explore and create all these multiple functionalities. That's where we come into picture and then we support you in creating those workflows and connecting all these softwares together. So, that's the whole uh, intention of this webinar series to help uh, propagate our understanding of how these workflows can be more streamlined, how we can create lots of more of automation flows and then lots of uh, data synchronization flows where we always stay on top of our latest data. So that is what is uh, the key or the crux of this. Um, so that's the thing, that's the thing. We can support you in creating your own uh, connectors, connectors or your own yeah, data connectors. So it can be in this ecosystem. So uh, how uh, and what technologies is required to do all of this, to stitch all of this together? It is definitely the big parties uh, we are focusing here is the Autodesk services. The platform that Autodesk has built, it's an online cloud platform that actually is the mother of all these uh, solutions that you see here, Autodesk Construction Cloud, Data Exchange and all. So it's all happens on uh, Autodesk platform services. Then extending that into a uh, proper cloud infrastructure tools like AWS or Azure, uh, depending on the organization cloud that is being there for organization. Then uh, lots of APIs is what one of the biggest uh, advantages of modern computing where all these services are like, you may not be uh, familiar with uh, APIs 30 years back, but okay. today because of the cloud and things, uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud, almost every operation that we do in Autodesk Construction Cloud is accessible through API also for Autopace. So we have very beautiful uh, presentation of those videos where using our ACC APIs, uh, what all we are able to automate. Uh, so it all happens in the background and does not never come to us in the uh, browser, but it it does amazing job. So yeah, that's and the last part is of course you need a software development company to write in codes and then stitch all these workflows together. So that's where custom software development also plays a very important role, like Cisitec does. This is what you would be really interested to know. This uh, yeah, so. What is the custom development? What what is mean by it? So it can be the, the we can create the browser plugin on top of ACC or any other platform which we are using, and using that you can do your automation analysis or you can extract the data from that platform. Then standalone web application which is directly you you can have your own URL. You can go onto it and you do your workflows there. 
Then second come the plugin for Beam software like Revit, AutoCAD. Those, those can be available into that desktop software and you can do the design changes or iterations by using those plugins. And then last one is the standalone desktop, like the Revit is a standalone desktop application. Similarly, you can create the separate standalone desktop application. So this is the major four crux areas where uh, custom software development comes into the picture. Yes, it is, it is. You can wildly imagine any use case that you want out of these four types of. These are basically it completes it covers it all. Like let's say for example, I have my Revit files in ACC docs, and I want uh, the number of doors exported into Excel column or a cell, Excel cell. So I have a shell which uh, Excel file which is a master file in my organization, and I want for a project particular project I want to read the num total account of yeah. those. Can I have it? Yes, of course. The data are the data is present in ACC in that file in that project. How can I extract it by creating a data connector for Excel? And who supplies this? The the whole framework is supplied by Autodesk themselves. What we do is we help you build those plugins for Excel. Like here in, the, in this case, it is a CAD software. Same way, it could be Excel, and then in that Excel, we create a plugin where instead of a some formula in Excel SUM, instead of typing the standard formulas of Excel, you can type in data extension and then key in the project name of the ACC, and then you write what you want. That way, it's all possible. So any kind of workflows you can imagine. And then how custom development happens. So there are the tools like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Eclipse, and for Python, Jupyter. So these are the development tools which, which we use for the development, then the basic software which on top of which you want to do the development, and some kind of databases where you want to extract that data. Fair enough. Fair. Uh, this will be definitely needed yes. for any custom development. So this is the skill set also which requires for custom software development. It is not only comes to the custom software development, it it starts from the conceptualization of your idea, what you want to develop. Then that idea gets converted into the software architect, how it is going to be developed. Then it's come to the UX design, how you are going to use it, what is your experience while using it. All these things get into the consideration. They need to go for the development. Then it's highly uh, verified using the automation, QA automation, and then it's deployed on your servers or uh, anywhere you want. So why we are talking about it? Let me uh, give you the exciting news here. We have decided anyone who is attending the webinar today, we are open to give them a free POC for their any kind of a uh, requirement. So please connect with me or Subranshu on any channel, channel. And if you want, we can discuss your uh, requirement right now also. But yes, so this is the offer. We will do all these things through your cost for you. Yes, so it, it generally starts like this because uh, you understand your work, your domain, your uh, product line that you work. That is, that is what you are experts of. And what we help you or bring in support is you have an idea like a one-liner or two-liners. Then we can help you conceptualize that. We understand your problems. We understand the depth of it. We, we spend that, invest that time to understand it, conceptualize a solution for it, software solution. And then we bring in the architecture side, uh, the user experience that you will definitely help it. And we take the whole journey. So we'll be there standing with you, helping you design the things. So that's what we take as a responsibility. That's a very exciting offer Vivek is announcing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely bring on, bring in uh, your requirements to us. What kind of automation you want in your organizational workflows? Kind of a, uh, software development work you want uh, to happen so that we can engage together and come up with a free POC. Then I think this is the last times uh, where we have created the data exchange and it's been releasing to the Autodesk University. Yes. So these are the, I think these are just glimpses what we talked uh, into the last webinar. So these are, these are many data exchange connectors which are available right now to the App Store. You can use them and have the early access to them and explore around them for your 
uh, sharing the granular data and accessing and using the meaningful workflows from them. Yes. I guess there is a huge amount of companies supporting uh, Autodesk in this whole uh, initiative to bring in this data exchange and make this engineering data accessible to the whole world. Yeah, that's a very great uh, initiative uh, directly driven by the CEO of today. So that's a great initiative and uh, we have got, reached a good uh, place today. Yes, sir. You'll see some glimpses of the use cases. This you talk, right? So let's start with the uh, building code compliance because today's our topic is about around the analysis of the uh, design. So when it comes to the EC industry, building code is the quite good uh, thing where people are needing help into doing the automation or uh, having help to understand the rules and creating some workflows around it. So this is what uh, we have developed. This is the building code compliance checker. This is the uh, basically a Revit plugin which understand the if uh, your logins, it starts from your login, it access, understand your data into the model. So it is basically available as a plugin. After you done that, you have to log in into the system. Uh, why login? Because it's connects connected with the ACC. The results are getting them into your on your ACC account. Yes. So, so it that, will also pull the file information, model information from ACC. And uh, because it's a, uh, it will give you the library access to the whole set of building codes, which yeah. is definitely not free to the general public. So it will need a login system and a subscription to access. Then it will also give you the idea about the rules or um, how they are, what are their criteria. All this information is available within the uh, Revit itself. So you don't have to go on to the external website or external government authorities documentation where you can understand the rules and try to validate them into your drawings or designs. Yes, this is like, uh, imagine having access to the whole of uh, a country's building code uh, inside Revit and those are all digitally uh, available very nicely. You can filter and find the articles and then you can select and even go for a checking of that rule or that uh, code compliance for your uh, models. So how effectively models can be, uh, the Revit files or Revit models can be created with a fully compliant design. In this case, I think we are checking for the fire safety. So you can see the this is the exterior wall and it has to be firewall with some fire rating. Yes. So this was an architectural design created by a designer. And if this model or this uh, building, this uh, whole structure would have gone to for approval in the municipality, then it may not have uh, qualified up or uh, carried forward. So to get the approval fast and to get the model uh, built correctly, this tool definitely helps a lot. So here, I think uh, the results are out, failed the uh, checks and then doing the edits, that now the rule is passed. In this way, the designer will have that tool and efficiently he can do the correction into the design phase itself. You don't have to wait for the uh, government authority to give, give him the comments and then work on it. Right. So even if you bring in, uh, let's say your organization keeps on bringing in new talent and then those talents keeps on, uh, the first phase of bringing in a new talent or a new modeler is to learn through the code compliance uh, checks and everything and then create designs accordingly. So that also is uh, fast forwarded here because you have this tool which has all the rules and when you're working on a design, uh, you can check for fire safety rules, you can check for uh, MEP rules, you can check for uh, structural rules and whatnot. Accessibility rules. Green, and, uh, green rules also. So all sorts of rules, accessibility rules, yes. So, so all sorts of uh, building design rules can be directly checked through this plugin. Now this helps both ways. Uh, when you upload a Revit file to ACC, it can automatically go and check for you in the background and submit a report. Maybe mail it, mail a report to you 
or dump a report in your ACC folder itself. And other way around, in a more interactive way, if you want, you can have it installed in your Revit as a plugin. And then from there, you can uh, have this uh, workflow initiated. So both ways, it helps you to create more and more code compliant uh, designs. I think uh, this is again one another example of the code compliance. Yes. So in this case, uh, we are talking about the cloud way cloud of uh, yes. uh, validating or uh, checking the compliance. So in this case, we are talking about the Solibri office. In particular, Solibri office works on the IFC files only. So if you want to connect Solibri with the uh, ACC, you, you will need to convert your Revit file into the uh, IFC file. Yes, so basically uh, here I can show a quick glimpse of how Solibri works because Solibri has all the uh, American standards directly available in the software. It's very easy to uh, bring in a file from BIM360 or ACC and uh, go through the code compliance checking, uh, go through the results, but if it is passing or failing, you can quickly check and you can get a glimpse of the complete dashboard. This is all the functionalities and features of Solid. So nothing new here. You get a report in the data. But imagine doing this uh, for every uh, time you make modifications to Revit. You go, you convert it to IFC, then you bring in that IFC, check in Solid, Solid B, and then you again uh, upload that report and everything manually to ACC. How difficult task it is. So and I think lots of revisions definitely yes. happen in the day. And where things go wrong is uh, human errors get introduced is you have a version of Revit, but the version, the file of IFC which you uploaded to Solid with that might be older version. And then uh, you are checking for something which says it's not failing, it's failing, let's say, but in your revision it's all correct or the other way. So in uh, Solid it's passing, but the file you have in Revit is failing. So you get all this is lost in these revisions, right? So ACC does automatic revision management for Revit, but who takes care of the IFC files, which actually is used for checking the model or building. So that's where we bring in this customized workflow on top of ACC, where when you upload a file to ACC, that's a Revit file, or let's say you upload a new version of, uh, publish a new version of the model to ACC, automatically you will get uh, IFCs created uh, we'll see that through this demo. Uh, while Revit is getting uploaded, the background also IFC file is getting generated. There are two options happening, right? One is the uploading of the Revit file, then extracting the metadata from that Revit file for the ACC. And again, we are converting that Revit file into the IFC. IFC. So while this is happening, we move to the other the file, IFC. Yes, the IFC file is already uh, getting generated. So this is the IFC file, the icon has changed. So you can see there we are in the conversions folder. We uploaded one file. And in IFC, we see the same file name with the IFC extension. So that's automatically created. How it's created? That's the important question. So ACC supplies something called as webhooks. Okay. Through webhooks, when we upload a file, we can have those events trigger some of our customized workflows that we have connected to ACC. So I have created some workflow in my cloud account. Let's say I am in AWS and I have created some workflow there to receive a Revit file and then convert it into IFC using APS cloud, APS platform. So when ACC file is uploaded to ACC, I can attach my webhook to their uh, account and uh, ACC will call my workflow and the workflow will subsequently take the Revit file, upload it to Autos Platform Services, convert it into IFC, and then uh, upload it back to my folder, desired folder. So it is like that uh, when every file is uploaded or every revision is uploaded onto the ACC, automatically IFC file will get generated. Yes. I don't have to export the IFC from the Revit and upload it here. And also the versions are automatically maintained. So the number of versions you publish for Revit, the same number of versions you will find in IFC. And the best part of it, I can also spin up a cloud machine where I have Solibri installed and then I can run, take the IFC file, run the calculation, the analysis, export the report 
into another folder in this all automatically let me understand so you are trying to say by just only uploading the file on the revit you can we can complete the whole solidly until yes. the analysis part and get the thing yes. in the shell yes. so so that kind of automation is really possible in this so all we need to do is upload the revit and what you get in let's say 3 to 4 minutes of time is a email which says your file is compliant or non compliant and with the details of with the whole revit details in the email the report so that's uh, one of the use cases uh, you can imagine any of such use cases where you want automation to happen just to let us know either you mean notun kono jodi app in shop thako kindly remove it and share is is anybody uh, speaking to us that is a regional doubt hi victor hi everyone all good Well, when are you? All good. I want quick doubt. Uh, with yes. the same this slide, uh, is it okay to we can con connect uh, our Revit and uh, Power BI? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let okay. us know your let us know your use case. Very perfect. Then then oh, you have used case also perfect. Then I can arrange a meeting tomorrow for you. Okay. So we'll take it offline. Oh, okay. thank you, Victor. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we'll move ahead with the slides. Uh, this use case is a different use case where we are actually uh bringing ACC data into a uh, custom know. software which is built by CC Tech. The icon that you see here, the right, and the image also is uh the left one is Revit uh, model uh opened in Revit. The right one is the same model opened in uh Simulation Hub, the software that CC Tech has built. then how acc data can come into any software uh, simulation hub is our software enterprise software uh, similarly many of you might be having custom made enterprise can uh, acc data revit data build data what type of data scheduled data whatever data it is in our industry can that data be received and uh, done some workflows on top of it in any of their custom uh, softwares that is possible So let's see a small demo of that. I think uh, before that, uh, I would also like to mention about what is the uh, software. So this is the demo about the autonomous HVAC CAB. This is again the software which is which comes under the analysis phase of the whole process. So here this software do the CFD analysis of the HVAC HVAC component. It tries to give you the different different uh, load calculations along with their uh, PDM P PMV calculations and a great visualization how your uh, HVAC or air is going to be distributed into the um, spaces how the um, temperature is going to be maintained how the people are going to be feel about their thermal if anyone is feeling more cooler or if anyone is feeling hotter because because of the wrong configuration of the HVAC system so that this software is all about that yes I think this is one of the Uh, outstanding software for HVAC consultants to design the HVAC systems for a build space. Yeah. In the, uh, I I guess today the way it works happens is we uh hire some HVAC consultants. We provide them the CAD drawings and then they go and work around with the thumb rule based systems that they have in their organization and then they come up with the size and equipments to be installed. But then things go wrong after that. either it is undersized or they are oversized and where it fa fails is uh, uh, installation of systems and construction of the building is a one time cost but then running of the system for life long means a lot of energy wasted so yeah. that is where we say also save a lot of energy or carbon that way yes better Uh, sorry to interrupt. One quick doubt. Uh, for this autonomous HVAC CFD, customer workflow should be in AutoCAD or should be in Revit? Are any conditions there? Uh, yes. So we have three options. Yes. Let me mute this video. If it is possible, just give me a moment. So the answer to your query is. Uh, 
it is possible in Revit, AutoCAD, as well as if you don't have anything, still possible. Let, oh, oh, me, oh, oh, let, me, oh. let me explain how it works. Yeah, yeah. So this is so I, I totally get it, uh, Superman. So but uh, immediate requirement is if you have any one page write up or something to share with the client to create the prospect, you can share with me. Technically, I'm I'm absolutely fine. Uh, you're getting my point. Some some write up if you have to promote this to the HVAC consultant. Yes. We can yes. It start because I have three guys in my mind. Right. Right. We we have the technical uh, documentation of this application. Okay. I will also initiate an email. Huh? Thank you very much. Yes. You can Thank you. Yes. So, so now we can see it's the video opening app. So this is the application developed by uh, us CC Tech people. It's called uh, Autonomous HVAC CFD or HVAC CFD. Here is the important part. We just happen to go over. So you can import a Revit file from ACC directly, or you can, uh, in this flow itself, AutoCAD files are also supported. And in the op other option, if you don't have any design and you are starting from scratch, then you can uh, create a design uh, through the easy modeling tool that is present inside the software. And this is the online platform. So you can do the all your sketch work into the online platform itself. And that uh, design will be used for the analysis. And this design, this application uh, takes input, uh, like you, you get to, you get a sketcher where you create the whole uh, oh. layout of your site, uh, and then at the output you it is all it is automatically creating Revit file for you. Yeah. So that's also possible. If you don't have a Revit file, you can upload a CAD file and then get a Revit converted. Or if you don't have anything, you just do a sketch, sketch, sketch thing uh, through mouse and keyboard, and then you get a Revit file also created. But in this workflow, what we are showing is the capability to read Revit files from ACC. ACC. So in Revit, we have this model could be a thousand, ten thousand 10,000 square feet model or something like that uh, of one single floor that we are interested to export to uh, from the whole building. We are just exporting one floor. And in this case, it also tries to do the design validations also inside Revit itself. Right. So you, you have seen that, that, that one of the mannequin was outside the building. So, so plugin gives you the idea that someone is outside the, the design confirmation. So, you have to do the changes and after that, it will uh, let you go to the next steps. Yes, and it also said that it's successfully validated and initialized. Now you can start the HCH. Okay. So very simple user interface to export uh, any uh, Revit data into data exchange workflow. So just click name it something and then it uh, gets uploaded to ACC as a data exchange entry. Then when you want to import it into any of your custom softwares, it can be done in this way. You see, you get to see your hubs and then your all projects inside the hub and you upload, you select a file, and then that file's data is then read into any of your software. In this case, it's a autonomous HVAC CFD. So the import is successful and uh, Okay, importing you can things. also import different different uh, design configurations of the HVAC. Then you have to provide your different different options. Like for HVAC industry, where what is the location is necessary because uh, that that uh, ambient temperatures and seasonal data and also that that's the thing. It, so now you can see the uh, this application is showing the Revit data in a two D layout first so that all the required input can be easily uh, inserted into this application. I'll skip the inputs because it's very technically uh, cognitive inputs is needed from the expert uh, yeah. industry. And then when we want to see the results, uh, these are some interesting <laughs> results with animations where we can see uh, the design that was provided, whether it is uh, having a good impact on the occupants or not, whether design is correctly sized or not. And we can also see some visualized uh, visualizations around these results like this. Yeah. So this is able to see the 
uh, carbon dioxide zones getting created inside uh, the whole build space and it will be also able to see the velocity controls the way wind is flowing inside uh, the space we will also see some uh, flow lines so and at the end it will also be able to generate a report and this report will be seamlessly uploaded into ACC back uh, along with the mail to your inputs that this uh, So that's the type of automation. What we did through ACC is uh, we, we had a software built from last eight years. ACC was not available eight years back, but the software was there. And what we did is we connected once ACC became the center point of all our data store uh, in this uh, in the industry we work in. What we created is we created connections from ACC. We read the data. We connected, uh, we entered into uh, the uh, application and then we again send the results back to ACC. So that, that the whole application is now automated through ACC. So that's the beauty of this uh, uh, integration that ACC supports. Yes. So this was just an example to show you uh, the power of ACC and for the custom software that you might have been building. Uh, Please feel free to help uh, us know any kind of uh, applications you would like to develop by consuming the data of ACC into any of your workflows. We would be more than happy to connect and provide a free video. Okay. Yes, as I said. Right. Uh, I think this is for the power automate, right? Right. So, because we are reaching to the end of the time uh, available with us, we'll quickly rush through uh, the last two parts of the video. These are less on the engineering and design side. These are our analysis side. These are more in the uh, dashboarding and uh, workflow. And the turning on the inside yes. side, getting the data. Right. And one of our uh, most uh, important use cases to visualize and analyze where the progress of a project is going. So Power BI is the key, right? So the next video is about Power BI. This one is about Power Automate. So Power Automate allows you to uh, make customized workflows without uh, any coding software programming. So this is, these are some of the Power Automate workflows which Autodesk already has provided. And we are just showing how easy it is to set up in your own uh, organization. So if you have a Microsoft Teams account and want uh, every time uh, a file is uploaded or issue is uh, created in ACC, you want those notifications to come to your uh, Teams channel or your personal uh, Teams chat uh, through uh, some bot like uh, ACC bot, something. Then you can create such kind of uh, workflows without uh, knowing anything about software programming. It's very easy. Some UI, you need to just set up this input and the message that you want to type in, uh, you want to see so all the properties from Autodesk docs, the Revit files, so all of them are available here. You just select them and then see the beauty of it uh, for this video. So when I'm publishing a drawing, uh, sorry, Revit model, I get some this kind of a uh, notification inside Teams that this is the data exchange is getting created by the person and uh, what was the version of it? And if there are more things like comments are added, then we can see it here itself. So you can imagine anything that you want to have in uh, this, or you want to have something in WhatsApp, uh, all of, uh, maybe you want, you are more familiar or comfortable using WhatsApp. Can I get more information along with that? What is the data is added, what data is removed, or what yes. data is modified? Maybe the so that number. kind of use cases, yes. So what changed uh, some, Generally, when submitters are sub submitted, then that time we do not have that insight directly generated. So today, by virtue of the AI tools, we can definitely do that. So more insights can be directly sent to the approver. Oh. So that's the type of uh, automation uh, is also possible. Uh, a very interesting uh, video we'll see here. Uh, it's, uh, we call it as ACC Copilot, which is developed by us, uh, our company. And what it does is, uh, 
you can query anything on WhatsApp, what you have in ACC. All of the information can be queried from WhatsApp. You just chat with this bot in WhatsApp and uh, just uh, it will be able to uh, provide you all the information that is inside ACC. So you have access to those many projects, those many um, folders, files. It uh, works so along the different projects. Yes. So uh, I can ask what are the issues in the residential project, residential tower project assigned to me or assigned to everyone. Then it will be able to provide you the list of them. I can ask uh, which project you feel I should be working, which issue you feel I should be working right now. I should prioritize that also. It will tell you based on your role, right? Yes, my role, my uh, the all the issues which has priority status and everything set up. So that way, it understands the context and it can provide me guidelines. So not only that, I can upload a image in ACC Copilot and say that please upload this image to so and so my project issue, my or the issue. Then those kinds of automations possible because. WhatsApp, you can do it when you are even disconnected to internet. And then when it goes online, it will it be sent. So that's the power of uh, WhatsApp. So ACC does has a mobile application, but this is more comfortable for me just to type in and check. Yeah, you don't have to. I can speak to as a voice note, right? You don't have to be able to cognitive to load up. Or ACC, that, where is that and all these important okay. anything. I can ask for any images. Uh, and it can directly bring in the email and show it in the WhatsApp, share the image to me. If I'm talking about some PDF drawings, or the PDF uh, yeah, drawings, then that drawings can also be opened in WhatsApp directly. It can also open uh, the link in the OACC application if you have it installed on your phone. So that way, uh, a very powerful uh, AI tool created for WhatsApp. I think we have only yeah, we'll skip few and just go to Power BI uh, connection. ACC has Power BI connection from many years now, but this is uh, powered by uh, data exchange. How it's different today is uh, we can have real-time dashboards created in Power BI through this uh, technology. You'll directly see, while playing the video, I'll speak more about this. So the type of when, let's say your engineering team is continuously making changes to, to the Revit model and uh, all the contractors who are working on this model, they are constantly sending updates to this model. They are working, they are submitting something that has been getting approved and then the model is getting, the revisions of the model is getting up, up and up. But while all this workflow is happening, this happens only inside Revit. Mm. The data is inside Revit, locked inside it, or it's locked in the ACC. But you either have to have Revit license or ACC license to understand it. So that's what ha is happening here. Uh, what we can do is the license, the access to the data can be brought into Power BI in real time. So when these workflows are happening, some vector is giving me updated uh, in data of model of that particular side, let's say plumbing agency is giving me that, then that information gets updated in real time in Power BI. All I need to do is, we are all familiar with Power BI updates. There is this, there is that button. There is this refresh button you see here. Mm -hmm. You just need to click on refresh button. In the latest version of Revit that is there in ACC, it will bring in sync in real time and then update your dashboard life. So great. You just need to uh, connect it once to the uh, viewer. So I'll skip the setup process of creating a dashboard. The demo is this is simple. one time, right? This is one time setup. setup. This demo is very small demo, very simple demo. I have a 3D viewer in Power BI and I have the count of all elements in this model. Let's say stairs are seven. So if the person who is creating this demo is showing that I'll go to Revit floors. Okay, so we need to focus on floors. Floors are 25. I don't see 25 floors here. But okay, let's see the floors are there and I go to 
Revit and I change that information in Revit. Then when I come back to Power BI and click on refresh button, data gets refreshed. One, I just deleted one floor from Revit and that's what gets updated here. This is just a very primitive demo, but imagine a very sophisticated dashboard where we have live updates of how much has work has happened. I think it is more convenient if it get connected with the schedule. Yes, yes. Like yes. instead of just numbers, the, the where are the like the door schedules, wiring schedules, window schedules. If we if you get to connect the uh Revit model and the schedules into the power BI. Yes. That is quite powerful. So as and when things the design teams, the consultant teams, the uh, planning teams are doing working on all of this. Uh, always our stakeholders have the updated data. So yes. that is the power of our BI real time connection with uh, Revit or uh, ACC. So that was the uh, intent uh, for this episode of the webinar. We are now open to questions and also open to. I'll uh, discuss any queries that you have. Yes, yes, please speak up. <laughs> sorry, no sorry, to... sorry for making uh, asking so many questions. So one, one final one. Uh, uh, do we have any used case for 3ds Max to Rhino Revit to Rhino? Revit to Rhino is there. Hmm. We can uh, we can discuss it uh, virtually if you want uh, around okay. it, but uh, we Perfect. can share the data between Revit and Rhino seamlessly with their properties and metadata. Is it is possible? Okay. Perfect. That's a that's a doubt. I will I will initiate an email for this also. Yes. Thank you. Thank Great. you. So there is a question around uh, any similar workflow for electrical systems like lighting analysis. Absolutely, yes. Uh, that's one of the very uh, critical, uh, the connection is missing in the industry right now between lighting analysis softwares and uh, Revit. Revit does has a small piece, but it's not that accurate. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, lighting system also have their own regulations. Yes. Like uh, what, what is what should the illuminations has to be into the room and uh, how many, if there are how many people, how many light has to be there because it lighting is connect, directly connected with the energy. Lead report is something that is in us yes. these days a lot. So we'll share our use case that we worked on this area. Uh, Arnab, uh, you have raised this question. So we'll connect with you. Uh, I believe we have your email ID and we'll initiate this. Uh, we'll share the use case that we worked on in the lighting analysis area and also get to know more about your use case. Yeah. We'll do that. All right. I think that's it for today yes. because we already passed three minutes. <laughs> yes, uh, I think. Sorry for extending for three minutes. So we will we'll connect back in our last episode of this webinar where we talk about operation stage, operation phase, which will be more around digital twins that also will be very exciting and interesting where we'll showcase real production use cases of how tandem and uh, highly customized digital twins which can also handle uh, which also has AI models and then we can handle what if scenarios uh, in the digital twin itself. So that will be also pretty exciting uh, to know. Uh, and I think uh, let's put one post on the LinkedIn r &D. Yes. What people are expecting in that webinar so that let's understand we can get what people are putting there and we can get come up with it. Yes. Thank you everyone for staying so long with us and uh, putting up your queries and uh, do write to us uh, we, or write to us on our LinkedIn handles or anywhere you wish to. We would like to know more about your uh, uh, queries and your requirements. We'll see what we can support you in your uh, areas that you feel automation is required. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.